Hello and welcome to Gina Carr TV. It's Earth Day. It's April 22nd, 2016, and I am delighted that you could join me here today. I'm going to be talking about Earth Day and what you can do to help the planet be healthier and uh, to help people be happier. Aren't you happier with your if you're in a healthy planet? Certainly I am. And I've come across a lot of statistics and information in the past few, um, I guess years actually, but mostly in the past few months that have caused me a lot of concern and given me a lot of reason to want to share this information with people. So thanks so much for being here. If you'd like to post uh, into the chat, you know, tell, let me know where you're from, what your concerns are. I see some people already did that even before we got started. So again, I just really appreciate you being here and want to know what you think are the best things to do to help save the planet. Um, last week, my uh, partner, Terry Brock, and I watched the movie Cowspiracy. Now, I had been hearing about it for quite some time and had not seen it, but finally, you know, it's Earth Day coming up, and I thought, well, you know, we should really get around to watching this documentary, and uh, so we did. We watched Cowspiracy, and let me tell you, if you have not seen it, you really do need to go, uh, not go, you need to see it. It's on Netflix right now, so you can... In fact, Leonardo DiCaprio is the executive producer of the version that's on Netflix. And um, we just, you know, watched it there. It was very simple and easy to do. And it's just such powerful information. Um, the whole movie, we're just saying, wow, this is amazing. And, you know, to the fellow that, that took this on and produced this movie, uh, I really applaud him. And I just, you know, there was so much information there. Um, if you guys don't mind uh, putting in the chat, you know, have you seen the movie? And if you want to give me some uh, props, give me those little hand claps up there to let me know that you've seen the movie, uh, that, that would be great. Well, you know, the movie just came out maybe a year or two ago, but this information about, um, so, so what's the movie? The movie essentially talks about the issue that, animal agriculture has on the environment and how devastating it is and how really with the one simple act of it's it's simple not easy of going vegan and converting to a whole food plant-based diet that we could save the environment and and so it's just amazing the statistics you know how much extra water it takes to produce a cow that we eat, to produce a hamburger, to produce eggs, all those things. I'm going to go through some of those statistics in just a few minutes. Um, okay, so movie, yeah. Uh, Glu, I'm having trouble saying your name. Gulia, something like that. Thank you for being here. The movie is Cowspiracy. So let me just put that into the, um, let me put that into the chat here. And that way people will know if they come in a little bit later. I'm going to show some uh, a screen a screen about that. But the movie is Cowspiracy. And it goes through talking about how through all these, these devastating uh, aspects of animal agriculture on the environment. Um, and as I said, the movie only came out recently. But these things have been talked about for years. In fact, I was just going back through a book that I picked up a while back called The Food Revolution. And uh, you can see how your diet can help save your life and our world. Yeah, you guys like this book? It's a good one by John Robbins. Now, I'm not sure the whole uh, history here, but I believe John Robbins is of the uh, Baskin Robbins um, Baskin Robbins dynasty for ice cream, and I I think he, you know, at least that's that's what I'm gathering, and that since then he has discovered that that even though he was, I guess, a big part of dairy farms becoming so big to provide all the ice cream for his company, uh, that in fact, animal agriculture, dairy farming, uh, all that can be very bad on the, on the environment. So let me just read you a little bit, a little tiny bit of what he has to say here. This was published back in 2001. So again, this information is not new, but it's new to a lot of people because people just don't know these things. And I've done all this research about uh, the effects of animal agriculture on the environment, uh, the 
the negative effects on our health of eating animal products. And I've just been amazed and I'm amazed that people aren't talking about this. So even though I didn't do a lot of publicity about this blab, I just said, you know, time is running out. It's Earth Day. Somebody's going to want to hear this. So I'm going to talk about it. So what he says, what John Robbins says is that most of us have remained unaware of the one thing that we could be doing on an individual basis that would be most helpful in show in slowing the deterioration and shifting and shifting us toward a more ecologically sustainable way of life. Few of us realize there is something we could all do that would have a tremendous impact on reducing pollution, conserving resources and protecting our precious planet and the life it holds. There is indeed one action within the grasp of each and every one of us that could help turn the tide. And yet most of us don't know what it is. I'm talking about what you eat. And that's what he says. And this book is talking about converting to a whole food plant-based diet. Some people call it veganism. Some people call it a whole food plant-based diet. I distinguish the two in this way. Uh, as far as what I've learned and kind of what my brain says, what's the difference between veganism and whole food plant-based diet? Whole food plant-based diet are people, people who ascribe to that will eat um, mostly whole foods, very few processed foods is their goal, and plant-based. So uh, vegetables, fruits, nuts, legumes, beans, uh, whole grains. I think, I think those are the main components of a whole food plant-based diet. Now, veganism takes that a step further. And veganism is basically the philosophy of do no harm to animals. So that would include eating a whole food plant-based diet. And it would also include not buying any um, type of products that contribute to animal animal um, torture and killing. And so no leather, no leather shoes, no leather furniture. Um, they would not buy cosmetics that had been tested on animals, all those sorts of things that fall into this more ethical area. So veganism, let's just look at it simply, is, uh, includes the ethical aspect of, of um, not harming animals and whole food plant-based is mainly focused on the health aspects. And then there's a whole bunch of people that come to veganism and whole food plant-based diet from the environmental aspect. And that's what we're focused on today. And I will say that for me personally, um, you know, certainly taking care of Mother Earth is a great thing to do and is important. Uh, but for me, the other two aspects, the ethical aspect of not harming the animals and the health aspect of doing things that are good for the body, uh, reducing the, my chances of getting cancer, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, obesity, all of those things weigh, um, they're more important to me. So, you know, what's important to you? If you guys don't mind putting in the chat down there, what's more important to you? Are you more focused on environment, health, uh, animal welfare? I'm just curious to see if you guys uh, don't mind popping that in there. That would be great. All right. Well, let's go to some of the statistics here that I want to share with you. And it's going to ask me to share the screen. And this is a fairly new feature on Blab. So I'm not completely sure how it's going to look in the recording, if it actually will even show. Let's see, it would like to show. So let's go look at my entire screen. And I hope if it doesn't show in the recording, guys, you're going to want to go to cowspiracy.com. And this is a blog post that's called POTUS can do one simple thing to help alleviate climate change. So um, those of you guys out in the audience, can you see this? Can you see POTUS can do one simple thing to change to help alleviate ch climate change? I'm going to pop back over to the blab. I can't see the chat while I'm sharing this, but I can see it right now. So yeah, you can see it. Yay. Thank you so much. How do you pronounce your name? Is that a GL Glulia? Glulia Monaco? Thank you so much for being there and for helping with that. I really appreciate it. So let's pop back over because this is a great post and there's so many details in here. And I will tell you that um, people said, well, you know, gosh, Tina, you're not an expert in this area and I'm not. Uh, how do you know that those statistics are true? And I don't. But I do know that um, Leonardo DiCaprio 
did enough investigation to put his money behind it and to support this. Um, that says a lot to me. And then I know that they have a whole, you know, lots of details here on the website called facts, facts and sources, infographic, frequently asked questions. So right here, we're on facts and sources. And if you scroll down, you'll see tons and tons of facts, right? Uh, I pulled up their uh, infographic right here and you can dig into this. So in fact, this might actually be a good place to start. You can see these different aspects. Um, animal agriculture is the most destructive industry facing the planet today. And here's why. So look at these statistics here. Uh, let's start at the um, up at the top. It says climate change. For greenhouse, global greenhouse emissions, 51% is due to livestock and their byproducts, whereas only 13% is due to transport, road, rail, air, and marine. Isn't that amazing? Because I bet if you, if I just asked you, you would have said you thought a lot of it was due to, um, to transportation. You know, they say, get rid of your SUV and help the environment. Well, it wouldn't help very much. Stop eating uh, meat for a few days and it would help a lot. Uh, so this says, you know, your carbon footprint, a plant-based diet cuts your carbon footprint by 50%, five zero percent. So that's pretty amazing. Now, uh, water use, look at this one hamburger to produce one hamburger. It takes 660 gallons of water. That is the equivalent to showering for two months. If you were just, can you believe that? I mean, that is amazing. So taking shorter showers, is it going to help a whole lot? What would help a whole lot is if you cut back and stop eating hamburgers. Let's see here. USA water use. For animal agriculture is 55% of the USA water use versus 5% uh, just for domestic households. Uh, meat and dairy industry use, one third of Earth's fresh water. So I know it's just amazing. Uh, I'm going to go through a few more of these statistics. I'm going to bounce back over to the blab so I can see if you've had any comments or questions. So please put those there. Again, I can't see the chat right now while I'm sharing my screen like this, but I will pop back over in just a minute. So uh, let's see, waste. Waste from a farm of 2,500 dairy cows equals the same as waste from a city of 411,000 people. That's pretty amazing. And it says here, every minute, 7 million pounds of excrement are produced by animals raised for food in the U.S. So with that, uh, I'm going to come back to this screen. But for just a second here, I'm going to pop back over and I'm going to say, hey, uh, you guys, Julia. So it sounds like Julia. OK, that's easy. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, you know what? questions do you guys have about those statistics and and are you as surprised as i am about those statistics i find they're pretty shocking and if you watch the movie this is a big part of what the movie goes through and whereas right now we're looking at at looking at it on a single screen of you know some graphics that are a little bit helpful to see the movie goes through a number of illustrations that really bring this these points home, bring these statistics home. And when you see, you know, this versus this in terms of how much water a human uh, or a household takes versus a single cow, uh, these statistics are amazing. And, uh, you know, it's just very, very well done. I, I think you will really enjoy the movie. And I see that, um, oh, let's see, the fast, a couple of people joined there and uh, they popped back out. That's okay. All right, be nice to share. Yes, give the web page for those stats. Yes, so the web page is Cowspiracy. Cowspiracy. Am I spelling right? Something doesn't look right about that. Just a second. Cow. Yes, with an S. Okay, spear. Let's see. Dot com slash facts. Okay, so C O W S P. R P I R A C Y slash facts. That's where you can find some of these statistics. So you can go back and look at them later. That's that's certain. 
All right, so right now I'm going to share my screen again and let's go back in there and take a look at some of these statistics again. All right, so um, land is, okay, so then we get down here below and it talks about, and this is a part of the movie that's just compelling. It talks about the rainforest and, um, and rainforest and just destruction of habitat. So it says one third of land is diversified, is decertified you, due to livestock. Uh, livestock covers 45% of the earth's total land. And uh, it says it's 1.5 acres of land for every 37,000 pounds of, okay, all right. But compared to, you only need 1.5 acres of land for every 37,000 pounds of plant-based food versus only 375 pounds of meat. So you can produce, what is that, 10, 100, 100 times, looks like about 100 times more food of plant-based food versus meat. Um, so let's see, the land needed to feed one person for one year is 18 times a meat eater compared to a vegan. So that's, that's pretty amazing information there too. Um, they talk a lot about the rainforest. Uh, we're going to get up to that graphic in a minute about species extin extinction. So let's talk a little bit about fisheries. Um, because, you know, this is not just land mammals. Land mammals are cert certainly important. And, you know, um, the we're talking about the birds and the we're talking about basically fowl, chicken, turkeys, ducks, and uh, then the cows, goats, pigs. Um, seems like I'm missing something there. But those are, you know, certainly the main um, land animals that are eaten. But we're also talking about marine animals. And uh, because we're fishing our oceans to extinction, um, not to mention the fact that they're so polluted, but let's just look at here. It says 90 million tons of fish are pulled from the oceans each year. Um, I've seen statistics that are actually much higher than that. And so, uh, there, and there's so much, uh, fish that's okay. This is talking about for every one pound of fish caught five pounds of unintended marine species are caught and discarded as by kill. So it's either either just thrown away or they are turned into um, food for pets or their ground is meal for other things. So it's just devastating how many uh, millions and or billions of a uh, marine animals are killed each year. And we, you know, we just don't need these things. We don't need animal products to be healthy. I've been vegan for a year now. I've never felt better. I have incredible amount of energy. Um, I'm very healthy. I think most people who would see me and who know me wouldn't realize that I'm healthier now than I have been probably since I was in my 20s. And, um, you know, I know I'm just one person and maybe some people don't adapt well to a vegan or plant-based diet, but I certainly have. And based on the research that I've done, I believe it is by far the healthiest way to eat. And, you know, when you read um, the book, The China Study by T. Colin Campbell, when you see the research done by Dr. Uh, Rick Esselstyn and you read Forks Over Knives and, and watch that movie, that's another movie that will really have a big impact um, on you of the health aspects. Uh, again, we're going to talk about the environmental aspect, but some of you are probably out there saying, well, so what if we're using all this um, land, we have to have it because we have to eat. Well, we don't. And there's plenty of healthy ways to eat that will have much less impact on the environment. So let's see here. Um, three fourths of the world's fisheries are exploited. And, you know, a whole additional aspect of what's going on with the fisheries is there's a tremendous amount of human slavery going on on fishing ships, especially in the Southeastern Asian seas, uh, just do a Google search on human slavery in the fishing industry. And I mean, I started digging into that one day and, and it was just so devastating. So, um, 
devastating to me to read it, but it's just amazing to to learn about it. Let's see. So a per, um, let's go back, finish some of these statistics here. Species extinction. Okay, you can see that. 110 animal and insect species are lost every day from rainforest destruction. What's one of the main causes of rainforest destruction? Well, Cowspiracy says it's animal agriculture is the leading cause of species extinction, ocean dead zones, water pollution, and habitat destruction. So, you know, stop eating meat and we will have much less species extinction. And here it talks about deforestation. So one to two acres of rainforest are cleared every second. Um, and animal agriculture is responsible for 91% of the Amazon destruction. So I, I know there are a lot of you out there that care about the rainforest. I do too. And so, you know, this is something that you can do to help the rainforest. So it says uh, acres of rainforest cleared from palm oil, 26 million. But from animal agriculture is 136 million. So let's just walk through a little bit here. And if you guys want to join me, you see the call in button there. Um, just click call in and you can you can join me and we'll we'll talk some more. But this talks about what can we do about it. So a person who follows a vegan diet produces 50 percent less CO2 and uses one eleventh of the oil, one thirteenth of the water and one eighteenth of the land compared to a meat eater. So we can make a difference simply by eating less animal products and replacing them with plants. Uh, some people choose to do, you know, they take it gradually. They go to, let, let, let's zap out of here and I'm just going to come back and just go straight to the screen for a little bit here. Yeah, awful. I agree. Oh, thank you, Julie. I'm glad you found me too. And so what did you say? I have not eaten meat for two months now. was not even because of the environmental impact, but that this vibe was an eye opener. Yeah. So what was the big thing for you? If you don't mind my asking, was it health or the way the animals are treated, which is generally in the vegan circles called ethics health. Okay. Wonderful. And um, so was there a specific condition or you just wanted to feel better, lose weight, those sorts of things um, and treatment. Okay. All right. And treatment of animals. All right. I gather you say, yeah, people say for me, which came first? Well, I will say absolutely. The ethical aspect came first. I mean, probably 20 years ago when I first learned about veganism, I wanted to do it, but I bought into the brainwashing that's done to us that says that it's not healthy. And it was only after many years of research and learning that I determined that I think it actually is very healthy. And, and again, I think it's by far the healthiest way to live by far. I mean, there's a reason that so many people in um, the Western countries um, you know, the developed countries die of these affluent diseases. Well, it's because we're eating more animal products. Um, animals, eating animals was only done by the rich in historic times. And um, so there are a lot of diseases that were clearly linked to, to animals. And then along the way, because of a lot of reasons, social reasons, taste, um, just many things that happened, People, um, people started eating meat more and it became more available. And in the U.S., um, there's a lot of subsidization. There's subsidies that go to the animal agriculture business. So it's um, not so expensive to, to, um, for a consumer to buy chicken and meat and those sorts of things. And so um, it's just it's, it's a crazy system that's gone on. And because of government, because of the way government works and subsidizes these things, because of the way the animal agriculture, um, the ranchers and the farmers pay off the politicians, um, there's just a lot of money in this. And so since there's a lot of money in this, then, um, you know, we're not given the right information. And you can always, in most circumstances like this, it's true, you can always follow the money to find out what's going on. So let's see here. Julia is saying uh, she doesn't trust that the meat we eat is good for us. It's not. It's chock full of chemicals, antibiotics. People eat too much. I guess no moderation before no eating meat. I eat once a week, maybe twice. Yeah, I gradually wean myself off of um, meat for the most part. And I think a lot of people do that. They give up hooved animals. Then they give up um, um, 
birds, you know, feathered animals. And for a lot of people, the last thing is to give up um, the marine animals. And that's the path that I followed. And I, I did give up marine animals as well. And I, I think number one, there's so much toxic uh, pollutions in our, in our oceans. Uh, I think the fish are very contaminated. And I think also that you just don't need that. Um, you don't need what's in the fish. And so, yeah, Julia, you're right. You eat here every day. The people are, are you in the U S is that, is that where you are? I can't tell right now from your bio. Greece, Greece. Okay, great. Wow. One of my, she's, I, but am for the UK. Okay. Well, one of my team members is um, in Greece. Well, she's based from, in Greece. She is, lives in the UK now and she's been with me for several years. She's wonderful. So Teresa Litsa, if you're listening, I'm, I'm singing your praises as always. And so uh, Teresa, similar, similar path to you. In any case, let's, let's stay focused on the animal issues and we're going to wrap this up in just a couple minutes. So if anybody wants to come in, just click, uh, click the call in button and then otherwise let me let me let me zap that out so that if you guys want to pop in you you probably can okay um i wanted to wrap it up with some final comments about the environment and about what you can do well as we've been discussing if you really want to help the environment you can become meatless and you can give up meat for one day, give up meat for, um, give up meat a lot, um, do it more often. Let's see, somebody today was telling me that he is a reduction, I forgot what he said, something, a reduction to terriest or something like that. So he's been reducing the amount of uh, animal products that he consumes. So, um, you know, and where I learned about all this was uh, actually at Freedom Fest, uh, which is a big conference that happens in July every year. And um, there's a lot of talk about politics and economics and those sorts of things. But they also run a great track about animal. I mean, not animal, but um, sometimes animal issues, but about health. And so uh, that's where I first heard T. Colin Campbell speak about the effects of animal products and, and the link between animal, eating animal products and cancer. And that's where my eyes were really open. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Wow. And so based on that, I started doing research and, and that's basically the path that I followed and where I am now. So, oh, and, you know, I didn't even bring the book in here, but there's a fabulous book called How Not to Die, How Not to Die by Dr. My, Dr. Michael Greger. And he talks about 15 chronic conditions of the West of Westerners and how they're all tied to eating animal products. And he has a fantastic website. Look at this. It's um, it's nutrition facts.org and if you want to learn a lot more about healthy eating and he does he, he does he takes research that's been done and he has a whole team of people that dig into the research is it right is it wrong and he'll do videos about this and they also write articles about it and so if you really want the the facts and the facts about nutrition then go there. If you want the facts about the environmental aspects of um, animal agriculture and what you can do to help the environment, very simply, these are very simple things that you can do very easily. And so go to cowspiracy.com, watch that movie. I strongly encourage you to watch the movie and, you know, connect with me. Uh, you can connect with me on Twitter at ginacar.com. And you can certainly subscribe to my blabs here. I plan to be talking a lot more about veganism and plant-based eating. And so let's see, at ginacar.com. Well, ginacar.com is my website. So you're welcome to go there too. And then join me on Twitter, join me on blab. And thanks again. Thanks, Julia and others for joining me. I know a lot of you will be watching this on the replay. So that's great. And Julia, you said you'll call in next time. Appreciate that very much. Well, time to call it a night, at least as far as this blab goes and Earth Day celebration goes. And well, I'll probably continue the celebration, but uh, we're going to wrap up the blab. Thanks again, everybody, for joining me. Really uh, enjoyed you being here and appreciate you being here. Over and out. Take care. And, you know, just 
just take care of yourself, take care of the animals. Let's live towards a more compassionate world. That, that's my goal. Every life, every nation, that's what matters.